What's happening guys, my name is Nicholas Renat and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how we can easily install the TensorFlow Object Detection API. Now this can be a little bit tricky if you're installing it for the first time. You could get lost, install the wrong versions and sort of go down a rabbit hole. It's really easy to do. But we're going to clarify all of that today and run through this in five key steps. Let's take a quick look as to what we're going to be going through. So now there's five key things that you need to install in order to work with the TensorFlow Object Detection API. So first up, you need to install Python. So we're mainly going to be working with Python and TensorFlow. Then you need to make sure you've got the Visual C++ build tool. So this is what TensorFlow relies on when being compiled. If you're using an NVIDIA GPU, you also need CUDA and CUDNN. So these allow you to accelerate your deep learning and train a whole heap faster. You also need to install protocol buffers or Protox. So these are the formats that TensorFlow saves the models in. And last but not least, you need to install the TensorFlow Object Detection API. So this is available through GitHub. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. So in order to install the TensorFlow Object Detection API, there's five key things that you need to do. And it's best that you complete them in this order as well, because you're going to avoid any issues. So first up, what we need to do is install Python. And to do that, we're going to be using Anaconda. Then what we're going to be doing is installing the Visual C++ build tools. And just to hedge off any issues, we're going to install that using Visual Studio. Then we're going to install CUDA and CUDNN. Now this step can be skipped if you're not using an NVIDIA GPU. If you are, I highly advise you run this step because it's going to make your deep learning models run a whole heap faster. Then we need to install Protox. So this is going to help us work with protocol buffers. We'll delve into that a little bit more once we get to that step. And then last but not least, we're going to be installing the actual object detection API from GitHub. So first up, let's not waste any time. Let's go on ahead and start installing Python. So in order to install Python, we're going to be using Anaconda. And the reason that we need Python is so that we can use TensorFlow inside of a Jupyter Notebook. Now, in order to install Python, we're going, or in order to grab our Anaconda version, we're going to go to this link. So repo.anaconda.com forward slash archive. Now, again, all of these links are going to be available in the description below. So if you don't catch it from here, just go and check the description. It's all going to be there. So if we copy this link and go to it, so in this case, I'm already at it you're going to end up in a screen that looks a little bit like this. So it's a whole bunch of link files. Now the file that we're looking for in particular is going to be the Anaconda 3 2019 or .07 version. So this is going to give us Python 3.7, I think .3. So this is just going to make it a little bit easier. Now I think you can use 3.8 successfully. So I've tried that as well. Seems to work successfully. So if you're watching this sometime in the future, just use the latest version and then you might need to play around with some of the other versions. But in this case, we're going to be using 3.7.3 because I've tested it and it works. So to find it, what we're going to do is just hit find and then we're going to search for Anaconda 3-2019.07. So if you just type that in. And you can see we've got a whole bunch of versions highlighted there. So in this case, you've got a whole bunch of different distros. So we've got a Linux version, a Mac OS version, a Windows version, and a Windows 64-bit version. Now, depending on what type of machine you're installing this on, just go on ahead and download the version that you need. So I'm running on a Windows 10 machine, which is 64-bit enabled. So I'm going to be downloading this one. Now, in this case, I've gone ahead and pre-downloaded all of these versions to make our lives a little bit quicker. So if you're doing this for the first time, just click that link and go on ahead and download it. In this case, I can cancel because I've already got it downloaded and we can open up our download folder. So throughout this tutorial or throughout this video, we're going to be referring to this folder quite a fair bit. I've just got all the stuff that we need to install. But you can see Anaconda3-2019.07-Windows-x86-64. That's the exact same file that we've got here. To install it, all we need to do is double click it and this is going to run us through a wizard. Then we can just hit next, I agree. In this case, we're going to be installing it for all users. If you don't want to install it for all users, that's fine. We're going to hit all users this time and hit next. And then we're going to select yes to get through user access control. And then in this case, we're going to be installing it in our C drive and then forward slash program data, Anaconda 3. Then hit next. And then we're also going to add it to our path environment variable. So this is just going to make sure that it's available from our command line and then hit install. So this might take a little bit of time. We'll be right back.
So that's Anaconda installed, then we can just hit next, next, and then we don't wanna open up these links and then just hit finish. So now the way to test whether or not this is completed successfully is if you open up a command prompt or if you're working on a Mac machine, just open up a terminal. If we type in Python, we should now see that Anaconda is popping up and indeed we've got version 3.7.3. That's all good. So step one is now done. So we've successfully installed Python. Now the next thing that we need to do is install the Visual C++ build tools. The reason that you need to install this is because TensorFlow relies quite heavily on C++. In fact, it's written in C++. So we need to make sure that we have those compilers installed. Now we're going to be using Visual Studio to install these build tools. And the reason for that is because in our next step, we're going to be installing CUDA. Now CUDA, it needs Visual Studio in order to work successfully. So what we're going to do is go on ahead to this link. So visualstudio.microsoft.com forward slash VS forward slash community. So if we copy that, go to that link. And again, you can see I'm already there. What we're going to be doing is installing or downloading Visual Studio. So if we download Visual Studio, you can see it should pop up down the bottom. In this case, it's downloaded. Now, again, I've already got this available in our downloads folder. So we've got VS, community, and then just a bunch of numbers. I'm assuming that's the build number. Now, in order to go on ahead and install this, again, there's a wizard. So we just need to double click, hit yes, continue. So first up, it's going to start downloading some installers. And then what we're actually going to need to do is download the entire Visual Studio package. This is roughly 1.9 gigs from last I looked. So it might take a little bit of time to download, but that's fine. We'll just wait for it to download and hit install. All right, so that's the Visual Studio installer installed. Then it's actually going to open up the installer and then we're going to be able to install Visual Studio itself. So not the installer. That's a bit of a mouthful, but basically there's like a installer interface that installs first and then you actually go and install Visual Studio. As I said, there it is. And so there's a bunch of stuff that you can select here. Now, what you definitely do need to install is desktop development with C++. So you can see down here, there's this little bit here. You just need to tick that. It's about 7.37 gigs that it's going to need overall. When it downloads, it should be about 1.9 gigs. So if you just make sure you select desktop development with C++, then hit install. So you should see in a sec, so again, it's about 1.94 gigs. So this is going to download and install at the same time. So roughly it takes a, at least a couple of minutes to install depending on how fast your internet is. So as soon as that's finished installing, we'll be right back. So that is Visual Studio now installed. So you can see it's gonna open up this sign-in session. We don't need to do that. We can just hit exit. So that is step two now done. So, so far what we've done is we've installed Python and we've also installed Visual Studio. So if you actually take a look now and type in Visual Studio, you can see that we do in fact have Visual Studio 2019 there. Cool, so that's now done. Now the next thing that we need to do is go on ahead and install CUDA and CUDNN. Now we need some really specific versions for this. So for CUDA, we need version 10.1 and for CUDNN, we need 7.6.5. Now CUDA and CUDNN are optional, but if you've got an NVIDIA GPU, I highly recommend you install them because they're going to speed up your training a whole heap. Now, in order to install CUDA, the first link that we need is this one here. So it's https forward slash forward slash developer.nvidia.com forward slash CUDA dash 10.1 dash download dash archive dash base. So if we go to that link, where we'll basically end up is at the NVIDIA developer site. And from here, you can download the CUDA toolkit. In this case, we want the Windows version, but you can choose your different operating system depending on what you wanna use. In this case, it's got the 64-bit architecture there and we want Windows 10. And in this particular case, we're just gonna hit exe.local. If I make that a little bit bigger, you can see that a bit better. So in this case, if we select that, you can see that there's a base installer that opens up down here. In this case, it's about 2.4 gigs, so we can hit download and that will start downloading. In this case, we don't actually need to go and download it because I've gone and downloaded it already. So if we open up our installation folder, 
I've already got it there. So you can see, in fact, we've got CUDA 10.1.105, and that's for Windows 10. So same thing that we had down there. In this case, all we need to do is double click it. And first up, what it's going to do is extract all the files, and then it'll actually run through the installation. So in this case, it's finding an extraction path. Just make sure that this is a path that's available. It doesn't really matter where you put it initially. So we can just hit OK. Okay, so you can see that it's now extracted. Now what it's actually going to do is check system compatibility. You'll then need to hit the license agreement, choose your option. So whether or not you want to install the express or advanced version, we're going to go for express this time, then run through the install steps and then you're done. So in this case, we'll hit agree and continue. In this case, we want the express version. So just hit next. It's then going to check a bunch of options and prepare for installation. So this should be relatively quick. And then once that's done, we can actually start setting up CUDA. Now, just a key thing to note that when you're using 10.1, make sure you use CUDA 7 or 7.6.5. It's just gonna make your lives a whole heap easier because those are the versions that tend to work together. So sometimes what happens is right at the end when you wanna use the TensorFlow Object Detection API, it'll use CUDA find to pick up 10.1, but then it won't pick up the correct version of CUDNN. So make sure you use these versions if you're setting it up in this environment. Alrighty, so that's CUDA now installed. So we can just hit next. And then in this case, we don't need to launch any samples or documentation, so we can close that. Now, super important thing to note. So once you've installed CUDA 10.1, you wanna be using CUD and then 7.6.5. So this is just gonna make sure that you don't have too many compatibility issues when you go to use the TensorFlow Object Detection API. So in order to grab that version, you just need to go to developer.nvidia.com forward slash RDP forward slash CUD and then archive. So if we copy this link, it's basically going to take us here. Now, a key thing to note, in order to download CUDNN, you need to be part of the NVIDIA developer community. So say, for example, I log out and I go to that link again. What you're actually gonna to need to do in order to download these, if I actually scroll down to find CUDNN 7.65.10.1. So if I actually wanna go and download this, I'm actually gonna be prompted to join the NVIDIA developer program. Now this is free, so you can just hit join now, follow the links and it's pretty straightforward. In this case, I've already got an account, so we can just go on ahead and log in. And then you can see that it's gonna say that we can now continue to download the file. So it's 7.6.5. Windows 10 X64, so we can go and download that. So in this case, I've already got CUDNN downloaded, so we can just extract it. So in this case, you can see it's the same file, so CUDNN 10.1. In this case, we've got 7.6.5. So if we extract that here and hit extract, what we now need to do is copy our CUDNN file. So in this case, if you actually step in, we've got a whole bunch of CUDNN files inside of here. We need to copy these into our CUDA folder. So if we open up where we installed CUDA, so I'm just gonna open this up inside of a new window. And if we go to program files, NVIDIA GPU computing toolkit, CUDA 10.1, and if we open this up, you can see that at the moment we don't actually have any CUDNN files in here. But what we're basically going to do is take these CUDNN 7.65 files and paste them into our CUDA folder. So in this case, if I grab my bin file, so you can see here that I've got CUDNN 64 underscore 7 dot DLL. So I'm going to cut that or copy that and paste it into its respective file inside of my CUDA folders. So I'll take my bin file and paste it into my bin folder inside of CUDA and hit continue. And then we'll do the same for the rest of the folders. So we'll grab our includes file and paste that into our include file inside of our CUDA folders. And then last but not least, we just need to do our lib file. So in this case, if I step back into CUDA or CUDNN, you can see that again, we've got an X64 folder similar to what we have in our CUDA folder. So if we open that up, we're just gonna take our CUDNN.lib file and then paste that into there as well. So that's about it for setting up CUDA and CUDNN. So what we've now done is we've installed CUDA 10.1 and we've also installed CUDNN 7.65. Now the next thing that we need to do is go on ahead and install Protox. So this is step 
four. So step four is installing protocol buffers. So why do we need this? Well, TensorFlow graphs are represented as protocol buffers. Now, in order to work with these graphs, we're going to install a, or set up a library called Protox. So this is going to help us work with it when we go to install our object detection library. Now, in order to get to it, what we basically need to do is go to github.com forward slash protocol buffers, forward slash proto buff, forward slash releases. So you can see those all here. I believe I'm missing an S. There should be, this should be releases. Oh, terrible formatting, that's fine. So again, the link is in fact github.com forward slash protocol buffers, forward slash proto buff releases. So if we actually copy this and paste it in here, Again, you're gonna to get to the same page. Now, in this case, you'll start up at the top of the screen. So protocol buffers v3.1.4. And if you scroll all the way down, you can see that we've got all the assets here. So there's a bunch of different installers. Now, the one that we need or the one that we're looking for is Protoc and then the one that's applicable to our operating system. So you can see there's a bunch here. The one that we're gonna use in this case is Protoc-3.1.4 or 3.14.0-win64.zip. So this is gonna be the one that allows us to work on a 64-bit Windows operating system. But you can see there's Linux installers and there's also an OSX installer as well. Now what we're going to do is download protoc-3.14.0-win64.zip. So this is going to download and then we can set this up. Now this is relatively straightforward. So in terms of installing the Protoc installer, we just need to grab that download. So in this case, I'm gonna grab this. And then I'm gonna put this where I actually wanna have it installed. So I'm gonna cut that out. And then I'm going to go into my local disk or at my C drive. And then I've got this folder where I tend to put all of my random installers and stuff. So, and it's just called additional packages. So if I open that up, you can see I've got label image in there already. This is from a previous video. I'm gonna paste Protoc here. So this is step one. Now, what we need to do is extract it here. So we're going to right click, hit extract all, and I'm gonna rename it. So it's just gonna be Protoc and extract. And you can see that we've got everything for Protoc here. Now, the last thing that we need to do is just make sure that we add Protoc to our path on our Windows machine. So this is gonna make sure that we're able to find it when we go and use that particular command. To do this, we just need to right click our PC, hit properties, and in this case, it's gonna open up. Then we can click Advanced System Settings. This is just open up on my other screen. And then select Environment Variables. And then what we're gonna do is update our path. So this basically means that when we go and use Protoc on our command line, we're gonna be able to find it. So if we hit Edit, and then we're just gonna copy this path. So in this case, because I've extracted it to my C drive and additional packages and Protoc, that's where I wanna point it to. Now, what we actually need to do is point it to our bin folder. So if we copy this entire path and paste it into our path, you can see that we've got it there. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna add another directory or another path to your Protoc bin folder. So in this case, we've just added C colon backward slash additional packages, backward slash Protoc, backward slash bin. If you put Protoc in a different folder, say you put it in a folder called random stuff, it'd be C, colon, backward slash, random stuff, backward slash, protoc, backward slash, bin. In this case, we can hit OK, and OK again, and OK. That's protoc setup. So that's step four now done. So we've now completed steps one through to four. Now, the final and most critical step is actually installing the TensorFlow Object Detection API. Now, in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're just going to clone the repo. So in this case here, we've got a repo, which is the TensorFlow Models repo. But again, if I paste that link in here, this is all of the stuff that you're actually gonna need to work with the Object Detection API. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. Now, really what we're going to be focused on is if you select Research and go down to Object Detection, we're mainly gonna be working in this space here. But what we're gonna to do to begin with is we're gonna clone this repo. Now I'm gonna open up a command prompt and I'm gonna do this with administrator privileges because we're gonna be installing some stuff in a sec. So if I right click, hit run as administrator and hit yes, you can see that this has opened up a command prompt. If you're working on a Mac, it's gonna be your terminal. Now in this case, I'm going to navigate to my D drive and then what we're going to do is we're going to clone down that model's GitHub repo. So to do that, we can just type in git clone and paste that link 
and hit enter. So this will take a little bit of time to download, but as soon as that's done, we'll be able to start setting everything up. Alrighty, so that's the GitHub repo now cloned. We're on the final stretch now. So what we're gonna do is we can take a look at that. So you can see that I've got a bunch of stuff if I type in ls. Now, a key thing to point out is that on this Windows machine, I've got something called git bash installed. So if I just bring up git bash, this basically allows me to use git commands or bash commands inside of my Windows machine. Now, if you wanna go on ahead and install this, you just need to go to gitforwindows.org and hit download and install that. Just gonna make your life a little bit easier when you're transitioning between Linux machines or Mac machines and Windows. So I tend to use this on a lot of the machines that I set up. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of our models folder. So we can just type in CD models. And then from that, so again, keep, keep in mind that we've got Git Bash installed here. So this is gonna make our lives a little bit easier. And then what we're going to do is navigate into our research folder. And then from here, we're going to type out a protoc command. So this is going to allow us to start working with our object detection library. So I'm gonna write out this command and then we'll take a look at what we've written. Alrighty, so that's our command. So in this case, the first part of it is protoc. So as I said, we're using the protoc library. And then what we're doing is we're typing out object underscore detection forward slash protos and then star dot proto. Then we're passing through a flag. So dash dash Python out equals and then dot. So this means it's current folder. So this command is from the official object detection tutorial. But again, I'll link to that in the description below. So if we run this, then the next command that we need to do is actually go on ahead and copy our Python setup file. If you're running in Windows without git bash, it's going to be a copy command. In this case, we've got git bash installed, so it's cp. So let's go on ahead and write it out. Okay, so in this case, what we're doing is we're copying the setup.py from object detection forward slash packages forward slash tf2 into the current folder. So in this case, we've got cp, the folder where our setup.py folder is, and then dot. So if I actually go on ahead and open that up, so remember we cloned it into models. So if we go into research, object detection, and if we take a look at the rest of our file path, it's object detection forward slash packages, forward slash tier two, and then setup. So basically what we're doing is we're copying this source part or this setup file into our current directory. So if we do that, then the next thing that we want to do is actually go on ahead and install it. Now, because we installed Python, we're going to have pip enabled so we can pip install. So to do that, we're going to type out python m pip install and then the current directory. So this is going to pick up our setup.py folder and go on ahead and run that. So if we run this, this is actually going to install all of the dependencies that we need for our object detection library. So let's go on ahead and install it. So this is actually going to install TensorFlow, OpenCV, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So this might take a little while, but as soon as that's done, we'll be able to test it out. And that is it installed. So we've now successfully gone through steps one through to five. So in this case, we've installed Python, we've set up our Visual C++ build tools, done CUDA and CUDNN, done Protoc, and we've now gone ahead and installed the TensorFlow Object Detection API. And you can see it's gone and installed a whole heap of libraries. Now, in this case, what I've actually got is some of the code from our face mask detection tutorial. I'll include a link somewhere above if you wanna test it out. What we're gonna do is see if we can at least get to the training step. So this is going to make sure that we can actually go on ahead and train our deep learning models. So in order to get to that, I've just got it inside of my D drive and inside of my YouTube folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up a Jupyter Notebook in there. And again, the Jupyter Notebook command will come from installing Anaconda, so we can now open it up. And I've actually got a file called tutorial. Again, I'll include a link to this tutorial in the description below if you wanna test it out. So if I actually open up tutorial and step through this, basically what we're going to be able to see is whether or not the TensorFlow object detection walkthrough has worked. So basically first up, what we're going to do is step through our setup paths. And again, this entire tutorial is going to be available in the description below. So you'll be able to grab this Jupyter notebook and test it out. Now the associated video to that will be linked as well. So if you wanna check that out, by all means do so. So we're gonna keep stepping through 
And the first set which will tell us whether or not this has sort of worked is whether or not our TF record lines have worked. So that looks like it's been created successfully. Now, if we step on to step number four, if we go through, that looks like it's okay for now. Now, this is the critical bit. So you can see here that we're importing object detection utilities. So this will tell us whether or not we're actually able to import that successfully. And pretty often when you're using the object detection API, this is where you might encounter some issues. So if we actually step through that, doesn't look like we've had any issues there yet. So if we keep stepping through by hitting shift enter, looks like we've successfully written out our config. Now this is the key bit where we wanna see whether or not this is going to work. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this command, and this is actually going to go on ahead and start training our model. Now, if we've successfully installed CUDA and CUDNN successfully and the object detection model successfully, this should just work and start training. So if we copy that and open up a new command prompt, what we're going to do is navigate to the same folder that our notebook is in. And if we run that command now, ideally what should happen is a bunch of stuff should show up on the screen and eventually we're gonna get our initial loss metric. So this is going to tell us whether or not our model is successfully training. So let's paste that in, hit enter. So if we just scroll up there, it looks like it's successfully imported CUDA, it's imported NV CUDA. And let's take a look to see if it's imported CUDNN. It's TensorFlow's optimized. It doesn't look like we've got any issues and it looks like it's picked up CUDNN. So that looks like it's successfully using our GPU and it should be training relatively fast. So ideally what we should see is once our model starts running, we'll get some loss metrics and we'll see our time per step. And there you go. So our model is now running and you can see our time per step as well as our loss. So again, it's running pretty quickly because we are now in fact using the GPU. So you can keep letting this run and eventually you can finish up the rest of that tutorial. But if you've got to the end of this video, by all means, give yourself a pat on the back because you've now successfully installed the TensorFlow Object Detection API. So we've done quite a fair bit. So if we take a look back, what we've actually gone and done is we've installed Python, we've set up our build tools, we've set up CUDA and CUDNN, which is not normally an easy thing. We've also set up Protoc and last but not least, we've successfully gone and installed the TensorFlow Object Detection API. And that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. And if you have any issues installing the Object Detection API, by all means, drop a comment below and I will get right back to you and give you a hand. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.